Good morning. Good morning. What a wonderful day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. My name is John Kelly, and on behalf of the South Aiken Presbyterian Church family in the session, I'd like to welcome you to this morning's virtual service and wish you all a safe and healthy fall. We are broadcasting live on the South Aiken Presbyterian Church website, sapc.org, and on Facebook. If you are a visitor, we especially welcome you, and if you want to know more about South Aiken Presbyterian Church, please visit our website. We thank you all for joining with us today. You can follow along on the website and in the bulletin that is published on the site. I have a few announcements. Next Sunday, we're having a congregational meeting. It's going to be at 10 o'clock. We like the 845 people to stay for the 10 o'clock meeting. We also like if the 11 o'clock people, that members that are coming, we want them to come at 10 o'clock. Now let me say that again. Those people that are planning to come to the 11 o'clock service, please come at 10 o'clock. And immediately following the congregational meeting will be the, um, the, the church service. So please, 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 uh, those who are planning to come at 11, come, come at 10 instead. Okay. At the reason for the congregational meeting, of course, is to elect the, uh, the class of 2023. And I'd just like to um, mention those names uh, for those people. God's Calling for Elder, Kelly Williams, Anita, Anita Self, Angela Clifford, Lynn Vandefort, and Jim Brownwell, Brownlow, excuse me. And those who accepted God's Calling for Deacon, Susan Selden, Elsie Wolpel, Jane Jones, Sonny Callan, and Michelle Green. And the person that accepted God's calling for trustee is Ken Hofstetter. And those people that accepted God's calling for the officer nominating committee uh, for 2021 is uh, Pam Pethick, uh, Martin McCrum, and Mary Bunch. And I just want to say thank you again to those people on the current officer nominating committee for their hard work and efforts. Um, next Sunday, uh, we're also having, of course, Halloween is next Saturday. Uh, next Sunday, we're having a trunk or treat in the back parking lot, our annual trunk or treat. Uh, it will be from 4.30 to 6 o'clock. We're going to have a movie, costume contest, best dec decorated trunk, and we're going to have some candy. And, of course, social distancing and masks, masks are uh, encouraged. Um, at this time, uh, we're going to have an um, announcement for um, Secret Santa. Good morning. Um, I'm Chrissy Cool. I'm sure you all know me. Um, we are actively still taking donations. We'll be taking donations for Secret Santa throughout the season. As we've said before, um, this year we're not sponsoring, so we're completely dependent on donations. Uh, this year I have put in the, well, it, it's in Spirit Express now. I hope to have it in the bulletin soon. Um, but I'm doing a little uh, donation tracker. So if you'll look for that each week, I'll be updating it. Um, as of right now, we're just shy of 40% of our goal for this year. So we are, we are actively sponsoring 127 kids this year. It's a lower number than we expected, but um, nonetheless, we need to make sure that they have a great Christmas. So thank you all. If you've donated already, we've gotten 40% um, already is really wonderful in my mind. So thank you so much for your donation and we look forward to another wonderful Secret Santa year. Thank you. I'd also like to announce that uh, we started Food for Thought this past Wednesday. It was very well attended. Uh, it will last for another five weeks. Uh, the name of the, uh, the book that we're focusing on during the Food for Thought is Holy disunity, how what separates us can save us. So uh, very informative, very interesting. So I encourage, um, uh, if you're interested, the Food for Thought this Wednesday. And of course, uh, we're not serving dinner. We're just serve, doing desserts and bottled drinks. And of course, we're practicing social distancing and, and masks are encouraged. Are there any more announcements? If not, let us open our hearts and our minds to the prelude and introit. The chiming of the bell will be three times, for God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Jesus, we are here. Jesus, we are here. Jesus, we are here. We are here for you. Jesus, we are here. Jesus, we are here. Jesus, we are here. We are here for you. For those that are able, please stand. Let us pray together the call of worship as printed in the bulletin. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers. But those delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditate on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by the stream of water which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaves does not wither, whatever they do prosper. Please remain standing. The 
Spirit and the gifts are ours with you with a silent let goods and kindreds go this mortal life also the body they make kill God's truth abide as still his kingdom is forever please be seated If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, for the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In humility and in faith, let us confess, confess our sins to God. Let us pray together the prayer of confession as printed in the bulletin. Gracious God, we confess that in our baptism you claim us as your own. Yet sometimes it takes longer for us to embrace the grace given. We sometimes act like our sin is not given. We forget that our old life has been crucified with Christ. Help us, O oh God, to accept your grace and walk in the resurrection you gave through Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. Hear the good news. Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. Know that you're forgiven and be at peace. Amen. As I pour the water this morning, let us remember a rebirth through the Holy Spirit as we were baptized during this pandemic. May the peace of Christ, of our Lord Jesus Christ, be with you all. And please offer, during the week, uh, the peace of Christ to those that you meet. At this time, I invite Jimmy Bunch to come up for the children's moment. Now we're ready. Good morning. You never know what I have in my bag. My kindergarten kids, they always want to peek in it to see what's in here. Because you never know. But this morning I have something that everyone will know what it is. If you're about this tall, year and a half, year old, or you're a little taller like the older children here this morning are, they know, what's in, they know what I have. Let me show it to you. <clears throat> you know what it is, don't you? You know what it is. It's one of these things we have all the time now. And what do we do with it? We squirt it on our hands, and it cleans our hands, doesn't it? So you do this side, and you do this side, and... You might get up on your arm a little bit like this, but you get in between your fingers and around your thumb, and then you finally wind up like this, right? What else do we do when, we, when we're doing this, when our hands, what, what else do we do? Oh, gosh, we're almost ready to pray, aren't we? Did you ever think of that? That when we're cleaning our hands, who knows how many times a day, that we're almost ready to pray. And we do this because 
We thank God for things, don't we? When there are times, uh, we do, sometimes we don't obey our parents, or we might be mean to others, and it leaves bad feelings in our heart. When we pray, we ask God to help us do better. Just like the hand sanitizer, when we ask, God gets rid of those bad feelings we have in our hearts and forgives us. So I want you to remember this week, when you're doing this, rubbing your hands together, take a moment and talk to God, asking him to help you. Does God always hear our prayers? Oh yes, always. Please pray with me. Dear God, thank you for hearing our prayers and washing our hearts clean. Amen. Day of our rising, Christ on the roadway, unknown compassion walks with his own. When they invite him, as fades the first day, and bread is broken, Christ is made known. When we are walking, doubtful and dreading, blinded by sadness, slowness of heart, yet Christ walks with us, ever awaiting our invitation stay do not part Please pray with me. God of rebirth and renewal, open our minds and hearts to the scripture chosen for us today. Let us give our full attention on your word and the proclamation in this moment. Allow your Holy Spirit to well up in us a revealed word and the implementation of that action so that we can understand and worship you better. Allow the waters of baptism to flow through your congregation today, whether online or here in the sanctuary, in order to receive your message for all of us. In Christ's name we pray, amen. The epistle lesson comes from Romans 6, 1 through 7 and 11 through 14. And Paul is talking about this concept, the letter to the Romans is talking about this concept of that we are alive to Christ and dead to sin. So please listen to the word from the Lord. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized in Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism in death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him, in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. 
For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. In the same way, count yourself dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourself to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and offer every part of yourself to Him as an instrument of righteousness. For sin shall no longer be your master, because you are not under the law, but under grace. And the gospel lesson comes from Matthew 28, 16 through 20. And this is a conclusion of chapter 10, where they are sent out two by two to the Jewish folks, asking them to come alongside them. This is a continuation of chapter 10, in 28 here, expanding to all nations. Please listen for the word of the Lord. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. Hear what the Spirit of God says to the church. Every Sunday morning we gather for worship online here and in person now. It's great to see you all and it's great to see you too, but I feel like I'm right here like this. Uh, It's odd, okay? Uh, So uh, if I look too much this way, don't be uh, envious uh, with the virtual online. And if I look too much this way, you guys give me grace and forgive me, okay, for this. So... um, I'm trying to balance this, okay? My neck will probably have to be stretched a little bit uh, here. But I've been th- we've been thinking about the worship pattern and the worship that we do each and every Sunday and even every day and how it flows from gathering around the Word and then being sent out into the world with the Holy Spirit and the gospel of Jesus Christ to be shared with others and to be kind and loving and all the fruits of the Spirit that we know from the book of Galatians uh, to our spouse and our friends and our family. Today we turn our attention to baptism, which I confess has been uh, convoluted, confusion uh, debated, and a crisis of faith in my existence, in my past. In our worship, we acknowledge and we confess our sin. We are assured of forgiveness. You saw John Kelly come and pour the water into this, what we call our baptismal font. And other traditions will say a pool being immersed into the... And I've done both. That's how convoluted my relationship with baptism is. I've had immersion, and I've had sprinkling, so I think I'm real good now. But what we say here when we do this, this baptismal font, we pour the water remembering the rebirth and hopefully understanding that our sins are forgiven and that we are called to live a new life with the Holy Spirit, controlling our mind and our hearts 
and our disciplining our feelings and being able to share the love of Christ and grow in faith as we grow in age. We are assured of forgiveness in the baptismal font by the blood of Christ and embrace that fact and experience that we are reborn. Get this, we are reborn with a new mindset that Paul says in the letter to the Romans, for we know that our old self was crucified. Our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin may, might be done away with and that we should no longer be slaves to sin. That's very important for us, especially in this day and time, where we shall not have anything that masters us except the Holy Spirit and the love of Christ. Now, does that mean that, oh, every day we're perfect? No, we're not perfect. There's only been one person that's perfect, and that's Jesus Christ. We all know that. But what we need to commit to is this concept of rebirth, this resurrection, because we're a resurrection people. We gather on Sunday proclaiming the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that's why we gather around the Word. And we sing the hymns, and we worship the God and give glory to God because we know it doesn't all come from us. It comes from the triune God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Paul says that our old self was crucified. That is indicative of knowing what your old self is, isn't it? So what is your old self? What is the old pattern that you have given up in the watery grave, which we don't like to talk about because in our tradition, we baptize infants. We believe that grace is given before you can express your faith in your cognitive ability, if you will. And God gives us grace, and we're able to bring them in, initiate them into the kingdom of God through baptism, a, a sign and a seal of God's grace upon them. But as adults, what is our old self? So it is important for us to know that what our old self is. What is an old attitude? What is an old self attitude? What is an old self action? What is an old self pattern or behavior or thinking? that we give up in the watery grave of the baptism font. What needs to be given up? A lot of times, as, as Christians and as followers of Christ, we have this concept, and actually we get it from uh, outside. We get judged because we're Christians and we're following Jesus, and then when we make a mistake and we sin and we struggle with sin, we get judged because the outside people that look at Christians don't understand grace or mercy of God. They don't have that belief system. They just say, oh, you're a Christian. You should be perfect. You should do right. You shouldn't struggle with sin because you got, you got God. And we get judged. And sometimes, right, in the, even in the church, we judge ourselves. And other Christians judge other Christians. And then it becomes a hostile environment in the church. And there's nowhere to be found the gospel of Jesus Christ and compassion and, and the grace and mercy. Hmm. So this concept of rebirth in the baptismal font into the water that acknowledges the empowerment of the Holy Spirit allows us to grow in our faith. And we need to constantly be growing in faith, connected to the Word, praying, serving, all those things, being able to follow Christ. It doesn't mean we're perfect. It doesn't mean we won't struggle or pop off at our parents or pop off at a friend or an elder will not do something good and pop off someone or even the pastor pops off at somebody. 
And now because that pastor did it, now I'm not going to go to church anymore because he, he, did, he was a bad example. So I'm going to stop doing that. Or that person, I was an elder on session. They screwed up. Oh my gosh, I, can't, I, can't, I don't know what's going on in my faith. I, I can't believe that. I can't go there. No, that's not the community of faith. That's not living in the Spirit of God. That's being judgmental and critical and confirming what the outsiders think. We have to practice what we preach. We have to practice, even when we struggle with it, we have to practice what we preach. I have known people that are late 70s even, and they have held on to feelings against somebody for years, even decades, they have never talked to somebody about it. They've never reconciled. They've never acknowledged, oh, I've done this wrong, and this person did it wrong, and we came together and we talked about it, because that would be an adult thing to do, but it also proclaims the gospel of Jesus Christ. It wants to reconcile the body of Christ and relationships and mend the brokenhearted, which we will hear in our affirmation of faith today. It's walking in rebirth. It's walking in the resurrection, knowing that we aren't going to be perfect, knowing that there will be judgment on us, and knowing that we are striving to do better every day is the commitment by the Holy Spirit. That's our commitment. That's what it means to continue to be resurrected in this life that makes a difference. And then when we are ready and God calls us home into the water, into the baptism of the grave, if you will, we're ready to meet Jesus because we lived in faith and we completely trust. And we go in faith and our baptism is complete. With complete trust in Jesus Christ. Our thinking in this sin condition, we are to put to death the misdeeds of the body. We are asked and called by God to forgive one another actively. If you have somebody that did something wrong to you, they may not know it. Matthew 18, we're still on the same gospel there. Matthew 18, go to that person. Oh, you mean we have to go to that person? You mean we actually have to mend our relationships? Yes, we do, because that's what matters in the walking on faith. So we have an obligation to God, and then ourself, and then our relationships. We have an obligation to walk in rebirth. You don't do it alone, though. See, this is what people don't get, is that you don't walk in that alone. You don't have that understanding, oh, I'm just going to go do that, because your feelings can be stronger than you knowing what to do. So what do you do if you're having trouble mending a relationship or disciplining a feeling or not using your, lot, your body as an instrument of righteousness? We pray, we ask God, God, don't let me do this alone. God, I need your help. I, I can't do this on my own. God, I, I, I come to the cross and I say, God, help me do this because I don't know what this person is going to think when I tell them my feelings. But I pray that they give me grace and mercy because that's what you would give me. That's what you already gave me. And in, in that, in that answered prayer, and you acting out your faith to somebody else, another couple, a family member, a friend, then you act in faith and allowing God to do what God does, and that's mend and brokenhearted. Are you with me? Do you understand what I'm trying to explain to you is that we walk in the righteousness of God not our own. We walk with the Spirit of God being empowered by the Holy Spirit.
but we need to continue to do what we know to do, and that is loving Jesus, loving ourselves, and loving neighbor. We cannot, from here on out, I, I challenge everyone, even myself, to commit to not letting sin rule in your bodies, in your minds, in your spirit. Because it's dangerous. It's getting you to walk in a pattern and a journey of life that is not congruent with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Therefore, you are not witnessing to the resurrection of Jesus Christ that you proclaim. So the outside world has seen the church continue to not walk in faith, not do what it proclaims. Therefore, the church, the institutionalized church, has lost its effect on culture. It has lost its effect because the people don't see the results of the gospel of Jesus Christ in us. Because Christians are, are, are held to a higher standard, right? Because Jesus Christ says, love your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and your neighbor as yourself. Have we done that? Do we do that? Do we strive to do that? And that's our question to ourselves to keep us accountable, because that's our standard. That's our standard is Jesus Christ, and loving God with all our heart, mind, and soul, and our neighbor as ourself. But if we don't love ourselves enough and walk in the rebirth with our relationships and in our community of faith, then that gospel is void in our life. It's not void in leadership. It's void in leadership. It's void in our relationship. It's void in your marriage. It's void in your friendship. We need to decide and make the commitment to not be mastered by anything except the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, and continue to choose to not let saint, sin reign in your bodies, reign in your mind, reign and try to control you. Because there are factors, there is influences inside us, our feelings, there are thoughts that have been given to us long ago, and by our parents, not all are bad, but there are some patterns that are given into our hearts in our minds when we're young that tend to go into the future and they reign in our bodies and we do not sometimes consciously allow that faith, that love, that compassion, that Holy Spirit to empower and change us inside so that we can change our behaviors and our thinking. Let us choose to not let sin reign in our thought processes, not let sin reign in our hearts, not let sin reign in our church, in our community, in every leader that ever will ever come here. Choose this day. Choose this day, because you can choose. You can choose to follow Jesus Christ today with the Holy Spirit. You're not alone. And that you follow, you commit in faith to forgive. You commit in faith to have compassion. You commit in faith to live the resurrected life or to strive toward it. Man, if we all did that, made a commitment today, and they saw the love of how we loved each other, the world would be changed, right? Our community would be changed. It will be changed. Let us be the instruments of righteousness, not of hate, not of unforgiveness, not of irreconciliation, not of worry or anxiety. Let us be, use our bodies through our faith with the Holy Spirit's help by the instruments of righteousness. For sin shall no longer be your master. Because you are not under the law, but under grace. Glory be to the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us stand and sing the hymn, I Was There 
to hear your morning cry. And God was with you when you were born. Go ahead and stand. God was there when you were born. God was there when you had tough times. God was there when you sinned and you didn't have reconciliation in your life. God has been through your whole life. God is. God continues to make a difference. God continues to show even up when we die in faith. Let us sing. I was there to hear your morning cry. I'll be there when you are old. I rejoice the day you were baptized to see your life unfold. I was there when you were but a child with a faith to suit you well. In a blaze of light you wandered off to find where demons dwell. When you heard the wonder of the word, I was there to cheer you on. You were raised to praise the living Lord, to whom you now belong. If you find someone to share your time, and you join your hearts as one, I'll be there to make your verses rhyme from dust till rising sun. In the middle ages of your life, not too old, no longer young, I'll be there to guide you through the night, complete what I've begun. When the evening gently closes in, and you shut your weary eyes. I'll be there as I have always been, with just one more surprise. I was there to hear your morning cry. I'll be there when you are old. I rejoice the day you were baptized, to see your life unfold. birth found in the triune God. Let us affirm our faith in the brief statement of faith answering the ancient old question. Christian, what do you believe? In faith and in death, death we belong to God. We trust in the one triune God, the Holy One of Israel, whom alone we worship and serve. We trust in Jesus Christ, fully human, fully God. Jesus proclaimed the reign of God, preaching good news to the poor and release to the captives, teaching by word and deed and blessing the children, healing the sick and binding up the brokenhearted, eating with outcasts, forgiving sinners, calling all to repent and believe the gospel. Jesus was crucified, suffering the depths of human pain, and giving his life for the sins of the world. God raised this Jesus from the dead, vindicating his sinless life, breaking the power of sin and evil, delivering us from death to life eternal. We trust in God the Holy Spirit, everywhere the giver and renewer of life. The Spirit justifies us by grace through faith, sets us free to accept ourselves and to love God and neighbor, and to bind us together with all believers in one body of Christ, the church. In a broken and fearful world, Spirit gives courage to pray without ceasing, to witness among all peoples to Christ as Lord and Savior, to unmask idolatries in church and culture, and to hear the voices of peoples long silenced and to work with others for the justice, freedom, and peace. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray the prayer of intercession. Please pray with me in spirit. 
interceding God, we come with humble heart and mind knowing that you are already working to care, comfort, and heal all your children in every nation, world, community, and individual. Renewing God who forgives and empowers the church to be reborn in the power of the Holy Spirit, lead us to be reformed, to remember why we believe what we believe and why we do what we do. Let us not settle for our mediocrity. Let us show the world the love you showed us. Let us not close our ears to opposing views, but be open to grow with them. Reveal to us the gift in the conflict and dividing forces in our church and outside of it. Your world has changed again and keeps changing, yet you ask us to continue to share the gospel in the midst of the world's conflict and agendas. We lift your world to you so that we are guided to care for it as we utilize resources given to create a better place for generations to come. We intercede for your nation with its battling political scene and ideology that do not always resonate with the kingdom of Jesus Christ inaugurated. Let us, as Christians, know your will and seek wisdom in the midst of debate and discord in our nation. Help us guide to choose in our conscience with the Holy Spirit leading in prayer for our elected leaders, especially the president to be elected. Give peace where just, with just actions. Even though our community has had its virus numbers flat, lead us to continue to care for those who are the most vulnerable. Help our community through wise leadership and love which considers all people groups. Let us understand the gift that comes in diversity. Great God, you are not only the God who created the heavens and the earth, but you also showed that your, lo your love for your people. People like Shirley, who continues to struggle with her health, Emma, as she continues to recover at home. We give thanks for Kim, who's recovering from the successful open-heart surgery. We offer Bill, who grieves from his lack of ease with his body's ability to move. We offer Bob, as he continues his journey of faith at home in hospice. We pray for Lament and his transition, Lamont as he transitions from state to state. We also remember those who grieve like the Burks family, the family of Phyllis Davis and her sister Cindy. We offer Dawn, who has leukemia, and for the loved ones who see her suffer. Thanks for a successful surgery of Leslie's knee. We thank you for Phil's body responding to a new treatment, as well as Magnolia. We offer Richard as he continues to hold the tension between the medical news and the good news of God in faith. We ask for clarity of thought for David. Gracious Lord, there are so many unspoken prayers we lift to your care. Give wisdom and love and compassion for all those we have not mentioned that you hear every day. Allow your will to be done and love given in the midst of every family. In Jesus Christ, I pray all these things. Amen. Let us all stand and sing our final hymn. Oh God, you are my God, and 
and I will ever praise you. O God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning, and I will learn to walk in your ways. And step by step you'll lead me, and I will follow you all of my days. Just a few things is we acknowledge that God has given us all the resources we have, we express our gratitude as we continue to give of our gifts and our tithes. Please give a gift so that, you can, so that we can continue to proclaim Christ's gospel. Please join me in the prayer of thanksgiving. Gracious God, we thank you for Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit that allows us the grace and mercy given in baptism, and even before we have knowledge. We thank you for the revelation, the empowerment of the gift that you give in rebirth. Great God, thank you for your Holy Spirit that continues to grow us in faith and in prayer. We remember the Lord's Prayer as it grounds us in our faith, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now I send you into the world remembering to follow Jesus, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and do what Jesus did. Love deeply. Have compassion. Reconcile relationships. And receive the grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it is in that grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be upon you now and forever. Amen.